Good morning. How the devil are you? How's your day been so far? More importantly, how's your weekend been so far? Well, you know what day it is. It's Sunday. It's 9.30 a.m. So it's time for the famous Foxes Aftermath show run by the fans, for the fans. And after yesterday, your opinion matters. So come on, let's get them comments in. Come on, let's get going. Come on, you Foxes. Welcome to Leicester Fan TV. Are you ready for the show? Thanks to our sponsors, ADT Taxis, Everards, Pucka Pies, Pink Car Leasing, Leicester Riders, Hologram, The Fox's Arms, Peter's Pizzeria, Hope Against Cancer, and Newbie and Co Estate Agents. We want your views, we want your comments, so join us live. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Morning all. Sorry about that. It was a little bit technical. I don't know what it was. It must have been one of my fat fingers not being able to press the button at the right time. How is everyone going then? Let's get your comments in. Let's get your views in. I want to see as many comments up there as possible about yesterday. We're going to bring in Reedy, who had a very late night. He had to go bed at half nine last night because he was not really had such a late night. Um, how are you, pal? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So, so you were there. So what was it? What was it like before the game, the atmosphere before the game? What were you thinking of? Well, when we saw the team line up, it was a very, very different lineup, I'd say. And I think the way I saw it was like, there's obviously a reason he's put certain players in there. Yes, yeah, so it was I... a bit shocked. Sumer was nowhere near the starting the match day yeah. squad. And then all of a sudden, he starts. But he's meant to have had a bit of a conflab, hasn't he, with um, with him before the week said he wants to stay and fight for his place. Is that because he doesn't want to drop in wages or the pulled out contract talks? With everyone I, else? The way I see it is, it's like, for me, obviously, because I'm still on that, that, sort, that side of the camp, I think that he might be trying to prove something. I don't know. Because you don't want, like, in my opinion, I don't want to see... And Didi in there all the time. I don't want to see Vardy in there all the time. If things can change to change how we win, if you know what I mean. So certain teams like Chelsea, you might not want to put all them players in. You might want to switch it up and see if different players work in a different tactic. And for me yesterday, Sumer alone was probably a man of the match because I hey, thought he was insane. Chris, Chris has said something here. Quite interesting, actually. We're always going to struggle getting points for the first eight to ten games for some big teams and some teams that hardly ever uh, that we hardly ever beat. Um, we were okay, just be an average season for once. Keep the faith. Yeah, I think it will be an average season. And you know what, lads and lasses, I'm not going to have a rant on yesterday's game at all. Yes, we played with ten men. Sorry, they played for ten men for an hour, deservedly so. But I still think we did okay. I think we had. We weren't absolutely fantastic and 100% at the races, but I still think we did okay. We created 15 chances, really. 15. I told five, you. Five on target, though. If Vardy had already scored a couple of goals, I think he would have netted two yesterday. Two, at least two of them. Was it four chances he had, I think? Maybe four? Three against or four. A, against a Chelsea team, yes, they were down to 10 men. It was it's still good to see that we had that many chances on goal. And there probably should have been, yes, yeah, some were, like I say, the, the one that was offside that we'll talk about later. Oh, sorry, not offside, but the one that got cancelled that we'll talk about later. But Perez VAR, as well. Pal. Don't talk to me about per, VAR. Per, per, Perez as well, when he came on, he got a goal pretty much. He come off the post, or come off the bar, and then it cut cleared again. There was just too many goals you could probably say. Yeah. Per, another yeah. one, Pratt. Yeah, the councillor. Morning, councillor. How the devil are you? Good to see Sumer and Pratt starting. I bet if Madders uh, was fit, Pratt would have not started. Question for you and question for everyone out there. Did we do better without Madders or would he have made a big difference? I want everyone to answer that. Did we do better or would he have made a difference, Reedy? I, I, didn't, I didn't like Pratt on the wing. Don't get me wrong, I think he played well yesterday, but... How we were playing. Oh, hold on a minute. Stop there. Craig, no. I'm still in the out camp. But yes, I'll give credit where credit's due, pal. We played well yesterday and we deserved a draw. And we were lucky not At to get a draw. At least a draw. At least so a draw. I'll credit where credit's due. 
I st I'm still on that side of the fence, but we did deserve something out of that and we played well. And if we play like that week in, week out, we'll be fine. We'll be great, but we just don't do it consistently. Sorry, Reedy, go on. I was saying with Pratt that we played him like more on the wing because we played 4-4-1, I guess. And because we had Barnes on one wing, somebody had to be on the other wing. And when Pratt was there, all Chelsea did was kind of double up on that side because they know we're weak on that side. So then when Perez came on, it was a different story because he's more, he's more of a winger kind of type of player. Yeah, so yeah. If, if Madison was in that sort of role as that kind of winger slash creative midfielder, maybe it would have improved. And I think if he was in that team at somewhere, he probably would have maybe made that difference to try, probably draw the here's game. Some, I don't know. Here's some comments. Um, Chris Ward said, I think we've done better without Madders. But the comment before him, Madders would have made the difference. LCFC Fox, Madders would have made the difference. Um only started playing when Chelsea were two. I'm not too sure about that. I thought we were playing some decent football before that, Jack. To be honest, um, we had a we had a very slow start. That's what cost us. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah we, st I think it was the and what surprised me more the tactical substitutions. He brought two attacking mm. uh, two attacking defenders on, two attacking players on. I think he kind of had to. I think at the point where well, we, we did well with the team we had, the moment we went down a goal. I think we were like, ouch, that, we didn't expect that because we were the better team. And then he was like, oh, we kind of kind of have to try and go for it now because we know we've been the better team most of the games so and we've got to keep progressing with that. Like and Matt I don't think... Shepherd has said, big improvement yesterday. If we weren't creating chances, it would have been more of a worry. Now, I've got that about Vardy. Like I said earlier, Vardy wasn't at his best. He should have scored at least two out of them chances. But I'd have been more worried if he wasn't getting into them positions. Like the first three games, he wasn't really getting into them positions, was he? Yeah, no, he were not oh. And to me, yesterday, he, even them balls that everyone's been asking for over the top, he made them runs perfectly. And yes, and another, on another day, I said that last night, on another day, he could have easily scored it. Yeah. The one that got me the most about uh, Vardy's was the one where he took it round Mendy. Now, if his confidence had been 100%, he would have tried to bend it round Mendy, like he's done. He does it quite a lot, doesn't he? If he's through on goal, normally he drags the keeper out a bit and curls it round him a long pass along the ground. Yeah. So a bit disappointing. I thought that's what he was going to do, but I think I, that's his I think it. his I think his touch as well around the keeper was a bit a bit strong, so he couldn't really get the touch on it to shoot it. Yeah. Chris has asked a good question, right? A Marty, right? Not sure why he keeps getting the nod. What has Cags? What has Cags got to do? Because Amati's not a hundred percent centre half, is he? We all know that he's a utility player that can play a few games here, a few games there, and drop in. Why don't we play a proper centre half at centre half? I, I've there's other two ways I can see it. Obviously, we're far, we're far and looking like it's done pretty much. We're looking at a new centre back, and then we won't really need Cags, I guess. But on the upside. At the moment, we don't have another centre back. Surely, you you do put Sunchu in over Amati again. Times yesterday, Amati did well. He did all right, but there's, there's this little moment where the ball's coming over his head, and he's not strong enough to com to compete with some of the strikers. So he'll always lose lose the battle and that. But yeah, yeah. I like mean, he's just not a striker, is he? Yeah, it is a decent comment from Ian Paul. Uh, morning, Jamie. Leicester City fan base is deluded in believing Brendan Rodgers is a top manager. He's very overrated and relegation beckons, uh, uh, beckons if we stick with this manager. Time for a change before it's too late to salvage our season. Rodgers out. I think we know which way he hit on the side of the fence he's on, pal, don't we? <laughs> I think he's joined me over here. Um, yeah, again, you, you just got to look at the game in a kind of positive way, I guess, because I don't think we'll bad at all and I think I I said other than the slow start I couldn't complain about yesterday I think maybe the Subler substitute wasn't the greatest but I know I was a bit I was like praising him for his tactical substitutions but what was the point in bringing a defensive midfielder on for Tillemans with two minutes to go plus I think it was five minutes six minutes yesterday I can't remember how long it was that seemed a bit of a strange why didn't he bring Dakar on and go three up top and go for it for the last. What's wrong with that plan? I just, I, I don't know. I think, I think what we when we when he put Pratt, uh, sorry Perez on, I think we looked a lot better. He made them few runs down the wing, but 
it's just like, we got we got into the attacking areas. We just didn't have the finishing to do it, and it's hard when they're going to bring. They brought another defender on, so they went far up the back. It's just going to be even harder. Ten men makes it even harder. People are saying that a ten men team obviously are going to be a lot harder to beat. I guess so. Yeah. It was just no, it's always, when you play okay. against ten men, you struggle. They, they, they have to work and harder. And, and it doesn't help with that. Difference. It, it doesn't help with that deflected goal. It could no. have gone anywhere, and it went straight in the net. So, right, just I'm glad you brought that deflected goal up. Ten goals conceded. This is Ben. Ten goals conceded. Four games in. I'm sorry, but a back line and keeper just isn't good enough. Would you say were you behind the goal for the that Sterling's goal? Well, just to the left of the mm. goal, sir, I should say. Um, it took a deflection off a of Marty. People are actually slating Danny Ward, saying he was in the wrong position. I'm not quite... It, went, it literally leaped straight over him. There's nothing you, you can do. If it takes deflection, you're in no man's luck. There's nothing you can do. You, it could either hit the bar, it could go behind the goal, it could go just behind, just in front of the goal. It's like you can't predict it. And if, you, if you're going for it, backwards, you'll probably fall over trying to get to it. Yeah. See, uh, Andy Meadows just says, people are slagging Ward off, but I thought he had a good game. Brilliant, saving the first half. Yeah, admittedly, I wanted Daniel Everson in. And I don't think, apart from the Arsenal game, when he tried to catch it one-handed instead of punching it, what Casper used to do, or both hands, I don't think he's, he's been at fault for any of the games at all. Uh, any of the games, mm. any of the goals, sorry. Again, other than the Arsenal game, which he kind of... Yeah, but the, that's the only one, that's what I'm saying, when he yeah, tried to yeah. catch it one-handed or punch yeah, it. Yeah, that's the only that, other one. That's the only one I've yeah, really think I don't of. think he's had bad, but... Um, I don't think Ward, yeah, even though I wanted Everson, I don't think Ward's been that ga that bad, to be honest. No. Um, Jack says, wouldn't have, ha wouldn't have happened if the Castagna and Amati closed down, though. Yeah, but that, yes. That was a slow start. That was the only thing you could probably criticise against yesterday for me. Obviously, it caused the first goal, which, again, that deflection could have gone anywhere. We've got a goal to talk about later on in this, but... Certain things happened in that game. If that didn't happen, I think we probably would have won it if that Sterling deflection didn't go in. Uh, like Tom said, brilliant save in the second half to tip it with his foot onto the post. See, I thought Sterling had just hit it and hit the post. But when you look at the replay, which was one hell of a save. So mm. he makes these saves, but I think it's just because no one's got confidence in him at the minute. Yeah. That's, that's the problem. Um, another question just that, that I put out there. I want people's views on it. Is surely yesterday proved that we need to play two up top. Vardy needs a strike partner. Because when he brought Nacho on, the game was different. And if we play two up top, do you think this might save his job? If his job's on the line? I don't know, because I've always been a, a fan of Cal. But yesterday, there was a lot of fans saying that yesterday he didn't really look at the races yesterday. And he, I think I agree with him. Yes, he holds the ball up a lot more and the movement goes a bit more, but the type of shots he did yesterday just looked a bit off. Uh, again, on another day, he might have gone in. You never know. So, I've always been a fan of two up top, but then it's always... Then you'll probably lose the, the, like the Barnes kind of effect, I guess. But then you don't have any other, anybody on the other wing, so maybe it is right to maybe bring Barnes up as a sub and change up to a 4 3 3 after like 60 minutes or so. You don't even know. So, really, Mark, Harrison, Mark Harrison's asked a question about the 9 0 at Liverpool. There's been four home 9 nils and one away 9 nil. Who should be at the top of the Who should be at the top of the tree? No. It's got to be a 9 nil away from home more than a home win, hasn't it? Oh, easily. It's hard easily. to do that. Everyone, everyone's got to agree with that. I know we're all probably a bit biased here, but everyone's got to agree an away 9 nil is better than a home 9 nil, easily. surely. Um, and I've just spoke from Glenn uh, from Total Saints podcast this morning, and he says, no, they've got to do it twice before the pressure's taken off us. Mm -hmm. um, so you were saying, I know what you mean by it, because the reason, was it not last season, the season before the season before we won the FA Cup, didn't we? Um, yeah. They both played together a yeah. lot. And Andy Medder says, Andy says, and it was raining. <laughs> Could be, yeah. Um, Barnes got injured, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So we, we, had to to that that system. we had to play the three at the back. Why why change it? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's one of my other mantras. If do not if you can't win, do not lose. I've got loads of things in my head going off. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why did we change it, Reedy? Really? 
from a winning situation. I've, you can't always keep the tactics the same there. And I think that's what was I was really impressed with yesterday with Rogers that he started with a team that no one was kind of confident in. Or I, I kind of wasn't at all at, at times, but the moment we started playing, there was fight there, there was passion there, and it just showed. Did you see that comment by the um, after the the Brendan Rodgers interview that he said yesterday we need to be more aggressive and more desire and more bravery? Yeah, we uh, did. We had that yesterday. Yeah, but he said we needed more of it. Well, I made this point in my uh, video with fans back the other day. We need to be more brave on the ball. We needed to be more aggressive and we needed more desire. So he must have been listening to what I was saying and probably tried to install it into him. Um, Aggie Frith has said he's been a City fan for since 1979. It's BR 77, pal. Um, and I'm worried about this season. What are your thoughts on the season in general? And everyone else's, comment what you think. Yeah. People are, people are going to kind of, I don't know, people are going to be like, wow, how can you say this and whatnot? But it's, again, it's four games in. I'm going to keep saying it. You played Chelsea, you played Arsenal. We played, um, who else we played? Southampton, who probably, and yes. Brentford. That was the one game that really I think we probably should have, like, probably should have won easily. But the Brentford game, I could probably take because they are a lot stronger team than most of the teams in the Prem under the top 10, if you know what I mean. So, I just, I feel like we've got a fight. And then we've got United next. It's kind of like a... Can you expect us to get many points against these first five teams? Probably six. Oh, and yeah. I don't know. Would, it's... would you agree with Ethan if, if, if Brendan stays, will stay 17th? No, I think we'll be higher than that. Um, Carlos has gone for, I generally think we may get relegated. Do you agree with that? No, I think we'll have enough to keep it. Ryan, we've, well, we've got to get at least 39 more points, pal. Where are these 39 points going to come from? Well, I, I think you've got to kind of give Rogers that that Fafana money and get the players he, he's, he's been asking for. If he gets them players he's asked for and we're still in that sort of absolute shit, then maybe it is time. But people can say, why would you give the money to him? Well, you've got no other choice. You're not going to give it to a new manager, are you? So he's asked the club. He, he wants players in and he even persuaded players to come to the club and then gets told he can't. Now is his chance to show what he can do. Um, Shadow Jaguar said, we only look good because they had 10 men. Uh, gave our they look better with 10 confidence. men. But they, was, they went 2-0 up with 10 men. They look better with 10 men because they, did, they, they? Had, they had to. They had to. I'm not sure how much you know Shadow Jaguar about football, but playing against 10 men is probably one of the hardest things to do mm. instead of playing against 11 men, to be honest. And especially when they bring another defender on to make it far yeah, the back as well. Yeah, that's still a better Like Terry, well, hello, Terry, how are you? Uh, he's, I don't think folks understand it's more difficult to play against 10 men. Yes, I totally agree with that. Um, yeah. Ben Morgan has gone. Where's that comment? Just gone. Um, there's a lot of people worried about relegation. Um, relegation all depends on who goes and who comes in January window. Well, Tony. We all thought that this window, didn't we? But nothing's nothing's happened yet. So um, I'm not I sure. Think we'll, I think we'll see a few come in now. I think we've got to, well, go. it's not been done yet. The deal's not been done, has it? Still not. Oh, been we haven't done. got the money. We haven't got the money there yet. At the moment, we have to wait for them to be. I think I have to wait to be the done deal. So yeah, and it's normally done in instalments. It's not one lump sum. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, four games become five, and five become six before you know it. We're well into the season. This time next week, we could be saying one point from 18. Aggie's right there, pal, isn't it? It is He's true. Right We've got Manu but... home, Brighton away. Brighton a storm with unbeaten in four. Manu but then, you, but then you've, got to, you've got to think it's a very hard start. It is a very hard start for us. We're playing three of the top five. But when does a hard teams... start become an easy middle? When does that start become a stop a start? Stop because start. then that's the point where you have got to start winning your games at home against the middle kind of sides, if you know what I mean, like a Southampton, maybe like a Brentford, which we just didn't do it. And now we are kind of a bit of a stuck, stuck situation where we're having to play against insane top six sides, which 
some have either lost a few in a row to begin with, like United or Chelsea have had a struggled start and we're kind of trying to beat them, but we just don't have enough. It's we're in the middle stage there and hopefully we can if we could play like we did against Chelsea yesterday against United, I think we've got a chance. So it's like Nick says here, we have money to well, hopefully we have money to spend, but we have no spaces in the squad. There's only Caspar and and child we gone, isn't there? And if a final goes, that's only three. Mm. But what's going to happen? Who's going to miss out? Who we had? I thought somebody said we had thirty-three. There's Very two true. gone. There's two gone, so we've got twenty-nine. So there's still four players going to miss out. Bertrand. Bertrand. Maybe even Vestergaard at this point. Oh, you'll be having tears if Vestergaard misses out, won't you? Well, if we bring a new defender in, we might have to. Um. Terry has gone for. Let's see what Terry says. Uh, our big problem. The cost of sacking Rogers knocks a huge hole in purchasing players. I said this yesterday to a lot of fans. Is sacking Rogers going to fix every single thing? It's not. Sacking him might make it worse. I'm saying that Rogers staying here and trying to fix what's going wrong at the moment. It doesn't help with the transfer window open mid season. That don't help. Losing for far not at the start of the season doesn't help. And now we're going to have to try and bring for like four, well, three or four players in, what, three days? Can't wait. I can't see that happening, to be honest. Uh, ben Wesley is gone. It's not four games. This this back's on form last season. Three wins in 16 against two relegated side and an awful Southampton side. One clean sheet in 27. Things won't change unless it changes. Now was this fact. Rogers or was this injuries? Because a lot of the time, yes, last season. End of last season, pal. We everyone really kept was. saying, everyone kept saying, wait till we get a fully fit squad. Wait till we get, we'll be back to normal. We'll be fine. Towards the end of the season, we did have a fully fit squad. I thought, didn't we, I thought we played a lot better last, last half of the season. I thought it was a lot better. Well, after the did. Liverpool United, after the three, Liverpool and three in sixteen, uh, Man City game, three in sixteen games, three wins in sixteen against Norwich and Watford and one against Southampton. And we haven't won this year, this season. We couldn't even beat Stockport with 15... Well, let's not go on that one because I had a go at you the other night, didn't we? We'll leave that one. That's done in the dust. And then we get Newport in the next round of the cup. Newport in the next round of the cup. And everyone's going, oh, it's time for revenge and that. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, like Finn Finn my- says, three wins in 16. Three wins in... Just put that... just. Sit back and listen to it. Three wins in 16 games. I do, know, said, I do know what you mean. but You just said we played better last year with when the injury, but we only got three wins. I just, I don't think you can really say, I, I guess you can, you guess you can't. It's, 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 you, you're kind of stuck in between where I think we've not been awful. It's like, it's not relegation standard, I don't think. Like Kerry's just said, if Rogers goes, who's come in? And I'll tell you, Pochettino. I think he would if he had the money. That's the problem. Pochettino. And there's other comments. Let's just hide that one. Um, where Where's it gone? Joe Hunter. I said this months ago. I When we got stuffed at Forest, I said Pochettino back then. I think he would come in. At one point when I was in the office, I said that isn't he still with PSG? But he's not. He's a free agent. Kind he's a free of agent. Manager. And he's, he's out of a job. And he's that's where Roger's money, if we do pay someone like him it, maybe he would come. Mr Six Hitter, Craig Hendry, I've seen you for a while, pal. Relegation form for a long time now. It has been. All of last season, relegation form for a long time. Everyone keeps saying, well, it's only three or four games this year. It's not. It's the, four, it's the 38 from last year. The FA Cup, Sort of papered over a few cracks and gave him a bit more time, honestly. Uh, Big Sam at this rate. I don't think Big Sam. Um, Rob McFarlane. Morning, chaps. At what point do we start worrying, panicking because it's getting to the squeaky bum time already? You know what, Rob? I'm on the squeaky bum seat already, pal. Four games to go. Three wins in six. Ross, not today, pal. I'm not doing any links today. Just me and uh, Jamie this morning. If I'll say this then, if he gets to like people say he can't wait that long, but if we get to like the Forest game and we've not had a win or we've not had even up to ten points, 
then maybe it is maybe it is like so the, maybe the forest, game, change. the forest game is um you know what yes i would like him but no i wouldn't like him i'd be mm. very much on the fence with him what kind of setup we would go for ten um, at the back one up front. yeah but it might make us more solid that's the thing um I was just going to say something, then, but I can't remember what I was going to that say forest, now. Oh, that yeah. Forest. The Forest game is on the 3rd of October, yes. So before then, before then, we've got Manu, Brighton, Brighton, Villa, Villa, Spurs, I think. Spurs, then International and then Week, forest, and, and then forest. forest. So we've got five games. That'd be eight games. Where can you see getting points from there, Reedy? I think we, I think we could do Brighton, but then again, they're all in good form. You can't help that. Villa. They're not in the greatest of form. We can get pink points against that. And the way we played against Chelsea, I think we could probably do that against United. I think we can get points again there. Again, it's all if and buts and maybes, but you've got to find points somewhere because, like you say, that run still, and the first eight games is actually quite tough. Here are Craig Andrew, Mr. Six Hit. So the real worry is why do we hear nothing from upstairs? It's always from Brendan Rogers. The silence is deafening. I can't yeah, really say it, much. Even the silence there, we didn't know what to say, but yes, it's true that Craig, the silence is deafening. It really is. Um, Shadow Jaguars, probably one point still. If we got one point in October, by the time we play Forest, I'm sorry. If he's not gone can by you, then. Can you honestly see that? I I, I could say. I, I I I could say yes, and I could say no. I just I don't think we've been that bad in eight games. Surely, surely yeah. not in eight games. Really, how many times has the same Leicester turned up in two games on the trot in the last forty-two games? I know what you mean. I know what you mean, and it's it's going to be hard to be consistent with the teams we can have each after each other. Chelsea away, and then United home. You can't, can you get two wins in a row against them? Probably not. You've got, Brent, you've got Brentford and then you've got Arsenal. You're not, you... I'm, going to, I'm going to a bit contradict myself here. Why, why do we keep changing tactics for the team we're playing? Why don't we just set out the tactics for us? Not for every... Because it might not work. We play. Just the same work. tactics. Have a lot. Five, three at the back, two wing backs, midfielders, two strikers. Play with that a because few weeks on the certain clubs will, will will know what they're going to do. Then, if we play the same formation every game, they know what we're going to do. Well, and that's where I like to change the formation up and show them we're, we're not so basic and so simple every game. And say they play the same formation. I know what you mean the yeah. year we won the league, we had that sort of same team at the time and the same lineup and same sort of time tactics, but. We found a way of always getting that win. At the moment, we're not. We're trying to try yeah. and find a way to beat the team we're playing against that day. And it's for me, I like that. But it's it, we just have to get that first win, and I think then we'll, 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 be, we'll be great to go. If West Ham win today, like Craig says, we'll be bottom after I've today's that. games. Manage, uh, managers have been sacked before, but have been in better places. I have said that. I said that if, yeah. if West Ham win today, we'll, we'll be bottom. Right. Last question, last quick question, because some of us have got to work on a Sunday, as everyone knows. Um, the VAR, I know it saved us with a penalty, and it's absolutely fucking shocking. But that goal, Arsenal scored a very similar goal, and it got allowed. Leicester did the same thing, and it got disallowed. Reedy, over to you, and put the comments in. What do you think of VAR? I, all over, well, VAR in general, I do like it when it's right, I guess. When? How many times has it ever been I right? Mean, I know that, but I was saying that I was saying by half time I said that with what's happened, the red card, they got the penalty that got disallowed, the goal that got disallowed, I thought, okay, it's it's kind of on our side today. But then I look back at the goal on the bus and it was just like, What the hell was that disallowed for? I thought when it was in game at the moment, I thought the keeper had the ball in his hands, Barnes had it out of his hand and it went in. Can't really do that, but then I seen that Barnes literally had a clear header on it and went in the net. They obviously did not check it on VAR. Well, that's sure they scored. And Marty scored. Well, I all I saw was Barnes headed it, yeah, hit it the post on. into yeah. the goal. And and I saw someone touched it, 
Who was it because he was offside? I don't know. No, definitely weren't offside. Uh, Jeffrey Dillon agrees with me. VR is helpful to the bigger teams. Yes, it is. Very top six biased. Uh, and I think a lot of people will agree with that, even though it has saved us. I yes. think he did well yesterday. I think he did well to be against Chelsea yesterday, I must admit. Well, only, only against once, but he was offside. He was in an offside position, although I didn't think it was a penalty. It was a very soft penalty. Um, and yeah, it was Jory again, of course it was. Yeah, to be offside for a boot lace, it's a shot. Yes, Chris, totally agree. VAR is absolutely shocking. Yes, it saved us yesterday. Well, it did and it didn't. Um, Ian Superfox, yes, it's here to stay, unfortunately, but it'll only work for the big boys. Um, but other than that, Reedy, Thursday night, what are you thinking? Win. Early doors. Win. Win. We're getting a win. Are you looking forward to... Thursday night or Friday night, pal? Both. <laughs> more, more so Friday if we get a win. Yes, more so Friday. Uh, that's just a bit of an in-joke between me and him. You'll find out next Sunday what the joke is. Uh, United, oh God, who's gone for that? Ethan, United will win 2-1. Man U, 3-1. Leicester win. Uh, Reedy, what's this one? Really would love it if Leicester are relegated and Forest beat Spurs. And Forest beat Spurs. They oh, yeah, today. Tonight. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. Gonna get, Forest are going to get slaughtered. Rightio, pal. Uh, right then, mate. We shall see you later. Be good, mate. Have fun. Oh, I'm going to rest my voice now. See you later, pal. Right. There we go, lads and lasses. Thank you for joining me. Outstanding numbers today. Outstanding viewing figures. Thank you for joining me, getting up. At stupid o'clock on a Sunday morning. Well, it's only half nine, but some of you have been out on the pop last night. Um, but much appreciated. Thank you for joining me, and I shall see you next week. It's ciao, ciao. Adios. Goodbye. Top of the morning to you. Come on, you foxes. Thanks for watching Leicester Fan TV. Thanks to our sponsors, ADT Taxis, Everards, Pucka Pies, Pink Car Leasing, Lester Riders, Hologram, The Fox's Arms, Peter's Pizzeria, Hope Against Cancer, and Newbie and Co Estate Agents. Make sure to follow us on all of our social channels at Lester Fan TV. Visit our website, LesterFanTV.com.